Hey guys, what's up? So welcome to this tutorial series on Flask. So in this tutorial series, you're going to be building a link bookmarking API such that users can be able to save links that they may want to check out in the future. So our backend is going to be multi-user, meaning that we are going to need a way for users to be able to create accounts and also to log in. So when they log in, we will be giving them an access token that they can use to access the protected endpoints, like the ones to create a bookmark, to, to retrieve all bookmarks. So we'll also have another endpoint that is going to be used to refresh a token. For security purposes, the access token that we get on login will be short-lived. So whenever a user logs in, we are going to give them a pair of keys, an access token and a refresh token. So whenever the access token expires, we are going to be using that refresh token to make a call to the to the token refresh endpoint where we can get a new access token and keep our users logged in. What we are looking at right now is the API documentation and we are going to be using Swagger to document it. So every endpoint we add in the backend will, will have to be documented somehow such that we can be able to give this documentation to like other developers that might want to make a mobile app for this API or if they want to make a front-end using React or Angular or Vue or whatever the front-end developers love these days, they can use this to know how to talk to our API and they can uh, make it work for the user. So here in Postman, you can see that over here, we go ahead and make a request to the sign-up endpoint and we get a 201 created, which means that a resource was created on our server. And then we get a response of that user send back. And then on the endpoint to login, we get the two tokens and then we get the other extra users information who has logged in and then with these tokens we can start to access protected endpoints like this one to get a list of bookmarks this one to add a bookmark one thing you'll notice here is on the payload of a single bookmark we have a short url and a long url and also we have the visits property so the visits property is used to track how many times we visited this url because it's common that we might bookmark things but we might not check them out so this is going to be used to give the user an insight on the things they have not checked out. So the way we are doing that is by, in the backend, implementing a URL shortener service. So over here, you can see that we have a field for the short URL. So whenever a user enters a URL like this, we go ahead and shorten it on our server. And on our server, we create a unique URL for it. So now when I try to access, let's say I want to access this localhost port 55 slash Z5B, if I go to like Chrome and I type it like here, notice that this should be going to our local server. But when I click there, you notice that it goes to our server and then it redirects here to the real, to the real URL. So this way, we are able to tell that the user actually checked out one of the links they bookmarked by having to implement the shortener service. So it's 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 quite interesting how it's implemented. So. I'm sure you're going to learn some cool things as we implement that. Now, over here, we have uh, an endpoint for retrieving the stats. You can see that for each of the URLs, we can track how many times it was visited, such that maybe on the front end, we can sort our bookmarks by the ones we've not checked out. So we make our backend API more flexible and uh, more realistic. So that is going to be it for the introductory video. If you're really interested in building these kinds of apps, I highly recommend you subscribe to the channel. Because I'm going to be releasing a lot of videos showing you guys how to build these kinds of APIs, mobile apps, web apps from scratch. So please consider subscribing. Thanks and I'll see you in the next video.